Good morning, good morning. God bless you. We are live at Abundance Season. How are you doing? Got some live energetic music going here. Amen. I'm still getting this this warning. I'm not sure on Facebook. So God bless. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus and the power of your might, we thank you for the opportunity to do the things that we do. Father God, share with us what it is that you want us to understand about the scripture regarding principalities. Father God, bless those that are coming on Bless those that are here. Bless those that want to be here. And we give God all the glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let us just uh, get into the atmosphere of worship and learning and understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. Come on in the room. It's Sunday morning, and we are ready here at Abundance Season. And I've invited those of you that have been regular on the line or, or when I'm live and to make sure that you know that this video will be available afterwards. Hallelujah. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on, give God some glory. Those of you that are here, give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap louder than that. I know that you're 20 feet away from me. Good morning, good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We're going to get started in a few minutes. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory be to the Lamb. It's good uh, to uh, see you're on. Feel free. Remember, you can see me, but I cannot see you. So feel free to let me know that you are online. And those of you that are, have been to our worship service, you know that we have uh, uh, videos that are going. And so... We want to make sure that you know that you are welcome virtually. Amen. And so, uh, you know, we have a video right now that's going, what is worship? And worship starts right now. Amen. Worship starts right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Giving God the glory. And I hope you can hear the spoken word. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Let's give him the glory. If you want me to know that you're on the line, give me a shout out right now. Because right now, we thank God for you. Uh, we give him the honor. Just let me know that you're online. Hello, Dr. Joy. It's good to see you in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I've got a, a definitely a powerful, powerful message. I'm breaking down. And before you put on your armor to know what God is trying to do, let me know that you are in the room. Hallelujah. And I tried to make sure I send you an invite if I can so that it's easy to get to the link. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Giving God all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Thank you. Come on, let's clap those hands and give God praise, setting the atmosphere. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, glory. Come on, pray with me. Pray with me as you come into the room. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I want to get started because this is a powerful, powerful message. And so we were talking about yesterday... Not just your armor, because you have, have heard, put on the whole armor of God. Hey, Sister Rose, giving you a shout out this morning. It's good to see you on. But teaching you about not just the weapons of your warfare, because we have heard, you know, the weapons of your warfare. So yesterday, I've got my Bible here, and we left off at Ephesians chapter uh, 6, starting at verse 10, amen? 
Hallelujah. Let's put that on pause in Jesus' name. Amen. And so um, wanting to make sure that you know um, what is going on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I'm going to uh, put Deacon to work. Deacon, if you can, I'm going to see if I can turn this on. But can you um, place one of the CDs in the CD a changer? Amen. And so whatever you pick, that'll be fine. Praise God. So I'm going to Ephesians chapter 6. If you're there, say amen. Amen. Just, you know, just take that one out and put whatever you want in. So I left off at Ephesians chapter 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So that was one thing that we have to realize when you're going through opposition. Did you got something in? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, be strong in the Lord. I got it from oh, here. Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. They're so helpful. Got a wonderful staff. Good morning, Sister Terry. So I'm going to give you a shout out. When I see you shout out uh, to me, I'm going to shout back. So I'm at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I'm going to put this on pause. Amen. Uh, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Okay, so two things that I covered yesterday. So if you didn't see part one on spiritual warfare, make sure you take a look at it. We want to pray before we're strengthened in the Lord and understanding the power in, in, in God and the power in his might, because his might is mighty in battle. And if we don't realize that the God that we serve can destroy every yoke, every principality, amen, anything that's not of God in your life, God can destroy. The anointing breaks the yoke. So we have to realize it's saying, come on, my brother, my sister. You got to get some strength in the Lord and remember the power of his might, not your might, but his might. And it says to put on the whole armor of God so that you can be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. OK, so then verse 12 is where we really need to understand and we overlook that so much. And before we know it, we forget who we are and whose we are. And we start trying to fight in the flesh or allow the spirit of offense or the hurt and pain that the devil wants to inflict upon us. And the whole world, you know, the enemy. So this is at the highest levels of government and demonic forces. So you have to realize before the devil started his own army, he was in God's army. He was Lucifer. OK, you got to re realize that he wasn't the, the, the praise director. He was worship. OK, so I'm going to talk about Ezekiel, but not today. So he was beautiful and brilliant. I guess I am talking a little bit today. And so the other angels were um, in awe with his beauty. And because of that, he started going, well, I guess I am fine because he glowed. He was so beautiful, but he was like the, the secretary of defense to God in heaven. So you have to realize that once he looked upon himself and said, you know, I'm so beautiful. I want the angels to worship me. And God said, oh, no, you are a liar. And so then that's when the battle started first in heaven. The first war started in heaven. So no matter what you're going through, the battle, the biggest battle started in heaven. No matter what the United States is going through, huh, the biggest battle started in heaven. If I can get an amen, if you're getting where I'm going right now, the biggest battle 
for our lives started in heaven. The biggest battle for what God wanted to do started in heaven. And so that's when Lucifer said, I want them to praise me and not God. So the first jealousy started in heaven where Lucifer thought that he was better than God and God said, oh no, you didn't. And he sent the archangel Michael out in battle and threw Satan and a third of the angels down here where we are, where God said that we had dominion and power over this earth. And if you don't realize that you have dominion and power over the things that are happening, you better recognize where it says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, finally, my brother, and let me say, my brothers and sisters, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, God don't play. He knows exactly what needs to be done. But when we step out of the power of God and step in our natural power, you know, when we begin to fight our own battles, when we begin to focus on our own finances, when we get to focus on our own situations without the power of God, then we begin to see more difficulty. I'm not saying difficulty and challenges aren't coming. It's just the way that we handle them when we know that God is in the situation. If I can get an amen in here. And so when we go to verse 12, and I'm not going to be long because I want to kind of saturate so we can understand. We've been putting on our armor. We've been putting on our belt plate of righteousness. I'm sorry, our breastplate of righteousness our belt of truth, our sandals of peace. And above all, we've been holding up the shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart by the evil one. We've been putting on our helmet of salvation. And then we've been holding up our sword, which is the word and the spirit of the living God. But okay, so we're dressed for battle, but have we been strong in the uh, Lord or are we just picking up our, our war clothes like a Louis Vuitton? Are we picking up our war clothes like a coach purse? Are we picking up our war clothes like an Apple iPhone? See, none of that matters if you don't have the principles behind why you're picking it up. So when we pick up the word of God and we put on our war clothes, we have to realize people are like quoting the scripture, 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verse 14, all year long and all last year, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and I will heal your land. And we have to understand that when we understand where it says strong in the Lord and the power of his might, we're asking for God's might to heal. Well, his might isn't like our might. His power isn't like our power. So when we pray that prayer, God is doing exactly what we're asking for, but not exactly how we envisioned. You know, we never envisioned that what we saw uh, this year, the protesting, uh, the virus, and then, um, you know, all of these uh, statues and racism coming and plucking up and being exposed at the root. You have to realize when God is casting down something, okay, it has to be plucked up at the root. So the devil wants to be seen when he's doing something that he thinks is great. And God says, no, he is a, a liar and the father of all lies. And so you have to realize the trials and the tribulations that you're going through, God is there. So you have to make sure that you're strong in the Lord in these times. Because when you're not strong in the Lord, then you're strong in something else. Oh, I, I, I know that that, that that stung a little bit. But if we're not strong in the Lord, we're strong in our opinions. We're strong in what we want. We're strong in how we think things should go. We're strong in everything that we see on social media. Uh, the spirit of offense is strong, but we have to realize that God is trying to show us in this season, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You need to understand what that means. God is saying, you don't wrestle with each other. So have you ever seen a wrestling match? Have you watched a boxing match on television? And you see two people going neck and neck at each other until somebody knocks the other out. That's flesh against flesh. That's blood against blood. And we watch in the round two, round three, round four. Well, that's not how it works in the supernatural. Okay, because it's a fixed fight 
But the key is there's unseen things that are happening in the battle. And so that's why it says be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, because now you're getting supernatural power. You're getting dunamis power from God, because then the, the principalities and powers that are not of this world in high places that are intending to do wickedness against you, then you understand. So today, all I want to talk about is what is a principality? So what I'm talking about is the government of Satan and then how he has created um, obstacles and, and meandering and, and, and curves and uh, curveballs or whatever it takes in order to get you off your game to focus on him. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not. So, so remember what I said, flesh and blood, think of a boxing match. Think of the high school wrestling, or if you've ever, well, you know, you got WWF or WWE. You, you see them going at it back and forth, back and forth until they have a winner and they have a referee. Okay. So you have to realize that you we're fighting against good and evil but on the spiritual sense. So there's a lot of things that are happening in the heavenlies that you don't see that, but God is giving us a playbook just like any NFL team because it is football season. And with further review, we'll see if it makes it to the end of the season. Okay, I had to give that commercial break to the NFL, but think about this. So God has given us a playbook. He's telling you what to do when things just don't look like. He's telling you what's coming against you. He's telling you to make sure that you are prepared. And he doesn't say it just once. He says it quite a bit. And he tells you what he says. So when things come against you, just like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and after he passed the temptation, you know, he was tempted three times that the ministering angels came to minister to him. So when you are tempted to do the things that are not of God in order to get out of a situation, God is saying, if you just hold on and know what you're going through, then I am going to send another comforter starting with the Holy Ghost that works within you. And so you have to realize, are you strong in the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to realize in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I talked about this in part one. So you have to realize 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, <clears throat> excuse me, three, for we walk in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh. So we got to get that. So there, God is telling you again. So in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12 and second Corinthians chapter 10, verse three, for we walk in the flesh. So this is a body. Okay. So then the flesh is sensitive. It's really sensitive. If you know where I'm going, say amen. Isn't true? If you pinch it, you'll say out. If somebody slap you, you'll say no, you didn't. If somebody accused you of doing something wrong, you may be ready to tell them off. And rightfully so. But the key is the outcome. You know, how far are you going to let it go in order to have your way? So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And it says, for we walk after the flesh, but it says here, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we have to realize that there's a lot of things that are coming against us now. And how are you going to be able to stand when we don't know what it is? Because we, we see in the natural and we hear in the natural and we may think it's a person or we may think it's an institution or somebody that's blocking our blessing. And the key that it that anybody can be used by the enemy if we allow them to do so. So when we look at what you wrestling with right now, 
Write it down. Go to a journal right now. What are you wrestling with right now? And then start looking at what it could be. So today I'm only going to talk about what is a principality. Okay, so it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but then it gives you these things in order. A principality against powers, against rulers in dark places, spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, haven't you seen things are going like, how could they possibly do that? What is causing them to be so evil? So let's look at what is a principality. Okay, let's look at what is a principality. Okay, so a principality is the highest dignitary of state. So now I want you to see that. Now that's the definition in the natural. But remember in heaven, you know, God is the highest. There's nobody um, higher or greater than God. And then you had Lucifer in heaven that wanted to be greater. So when he got kicked out of heaven, he created his own government, his own evil territories. OK, so it's the highest dignitary of the state. Um, so you have to realize that that he has um, governance where he dispatches demonic influence, demonic strongholds, depending on the situation. The key is Satan cannot move unless, as, Satan cannot move unless it's in the word of God. So the, the word of God talks about what Satan can do. So a principality, it's in the Old Testament. And um, it occurs once in Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 18. Your, your principality shall come down. Here in the King James Version, which is what I'm reading, um, refers to that. It talks about uh, the head and, and various parts of demonic government. Okay? And so then it talks about that in the New Testament, when it talks about a principality, uh, a principality is talking about men of authority. So it talks about that in Titus chapter three, verse one, put them in mind to be subject, amen, to principalities, rulers, amen. So then here it's talking about superhuman agencies, angelic or demonic is what they're talking about. This is what Paul tried to tell us and keenly tell us and to be sensible of this issue and understanding that what we are warring against, all right? So we have to realize that if we allow these principalities to take rule over our homes, rule over our happiness, rule over our five senses, we begin to think differently than what we should. So this is the highest level of, of government from a a, a satanic sense, meaning that what is coming against you. Uh, we have to realize that he's going to try to penetrate our thoughts and uh, penetrate how we react to uh, certain situations or uh, penetrate how um, relationships, you know, uh, think about in America how the divorce rate is just uh, astronomical, where whether it's a believer or an unbeliever, it's still over 50% people are still getting divorced. So we have to realize, you know, Satan will try to do something to pierce through a relationship in order for one person to think so differently where they're in battle all the time. And here God is telling us the battle is not ours. It is the Lord. And so we have to realize that that, you know, Satan sits on this throne where he wants to be God, but he can't. That's why God says be strong in him and strong in his power so that when you realize that whatever the topic is, then uh, uh, Satan has sent uh, a, a, a spirit, a specific spirit um, on assignment, demons on assignment for that 
specific situation. So that authority comes high. So when you start seeing things that are going on, it's like, where did this come from? You stop and you pray. Then that's where you sharpen that armor. And you're like, I, Lord, I need your strength. And so if you haven't asked God for strength, you got to begin to ask him for strength so that you can understand the supernatural that's coming at the highest level. That That is a principality. So just like um, in this earth, if you, if you even look at the, the uh, earthly definition, you know, uh, every city has a government, okay? So there's government in heaven. So there's certain angels that do certain thing, uh, things. That's why we don't talk to angels. We don't control the angels. It comes from God. But we always pray in the name of Jesus. Amen? So when we start looking at, at why is this happening, we have to get out of ourselves and say, God, I need your strength to get through this. Amen? And so that's why, you know, the the atmosphere, we forget about the weather and we just rely on human science. We have to pray when there's things that are coming against that are so severe. Think about if you lived in Dayton, Ohio, and the uh, Dayton tornadoes were coming your way, why did they skip your house? And a lot of people don't want to hear that, but were you praying at the exact same time or did you actually think that it wasn't going to come, like that's that's just more news. And so we have to be more proactive in the power of God and the power of his might and the strength of God. And so that we're not reacting every time Satan throws one of these powerful blows at us. Amen. Uh, Satan right now has Christians. So this what's happening in the atmosphere with Christians and churches right now are at the highest level where you see that uh, the, the anointed church prophetic people are in disagreement. So, and it said that the false prophets shall rise in the end days. And so we have to realize that I have never seen, even in social media, so many people that say that they believe in God cuss so much. And these are supposed to be leaders. I'm not talking about baby Christians. I'm talking about people that are supposed to be leaders that are getting so angry. And so we have to realize that uh, the principalities and the powers and heavenly places, the manifold wisdom of God once naturally inquires, what was the purpose of this revelation? So we need to understand that Satan and his demons and dark angels that were thrown from heaven that used to praise God now have been thrown here on earth. And to for us to, to wreak habit or, or to provide a demonic influence in our daily activities, you know, you wonder, you know, why did this happen? Why is my family acting this way? What is going on with my husband? What is going on right now? Father God, I need your help. And then you have to look at the highest demonic activity is from Satan, which is which are principalities and territories where he sends demons to. So we have to get to a place where we understand that these are territories. The principalities are territories. So these are demons at the highest level. So that's why when you pray, you need to understand that now it's time to get into maturity in prayer. You know, the, the prayer that we prayed um, back in, um, in, uh, in childhood, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food, amen. That, that's my childhood prayer, amen. But now that I am mature and I see mature influences that are not from God, I have to have a mature prayer. And y'all are going to hear me say this all the time. Start with the Lord's Prayer. If you don't know the Lord's Prayer, what are you praying? Start with the prayer that God gave the disciples. Okay, because that prayer does have power. Because God says, this is how you pray. Start there against the principality. See, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to keep it plain and I'm going to keep you in the word of God. Because if you don't be careful, then you may be praying witchcraft prayers that will send more principalities your way. Where you begin to say, Father God, I can't stand such and such. So I want you to make sure that they fail too. In Jesus name, God isn't going to answer that prayer. 
God isn't going to answer a prayer for you to ask for failure. But if you say, God, I don't know what's happening in the atmosphere, but whatever the devil is trying to do to me, I ask you to make sure that his plans will fail. See the difference? So you're not um, putting a witchcraft prayer over a person. Okay, you if you pray, oh, Father God, I'm praying um, for Sister Terry right now. I'm praying for Sister Joy right now. I'm, uh, I'm praying for Sister Rose. I, I'm asking you to give them abundant life and life more abundantly. Father God, I want you to make sure that their cup's running over. God's going to answer that prayer. But a witchcraft prayer is when you wish and pray hateful things over people. God isn't going to answer that prayer. What you have now done is dispatch a principality over the situation where it goes from bad to worse. If you're understanding what I'm saying, somebody say amen. So you never pray bad things over someone, even people that you hate. You know, you say, God, you see this and I know this is not from God. I'm asking you to remove this, remove this out of this situation, remove this out of that situation in the name of Jesus. If somebody can type amen, if you're getting this. So principalities are what orchestrates the others. And I'm done right now. So I'm going to stop right here. Principalities. So against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness all of that is orchestrated by the principalities that are in different territories are you listening to what i'm saying so now you've got a principality that's over a certain region and then now it's like okay i'm gonna sense the spiritual wickedness here oh i'm gonna make it hell in that territory. I'm going to throw some racism in it. I'm going to throw some bankruptcy in it. I'm going to make sure the child never respects you. I'm going to make sure you get a divorce. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because that's what the principality, it'll come over a territory. It'll come over a church. And before you know it, the pastor's divorced. The deacons are divorced. The deaconess are divorced. Uh, adultery is blind. Wow. People are stealing the money. I'm just letting you know if that's happening in the church what do you think that could happen to your family because it's starting in the house so you have to realize that a principality may be over a region like why is this happening just in this state you know why is this school shootings just in this territory why is there something always happening in the colorado you have to realize that there is, is, is false religions that are rising up more than ever. Wicked, you know, so if you don't have my book, Being a Happy, Healthy, Holy Woman, I taught, um, I taught 20 years ago before and now it's become, they call it pagan religion, okay? So no, it's, it's Wiccan, which is a form of witchcraft, you know, where they try to cast spells, white magic, and they make it look glamorous. So that's, that's part of a principality where it's trying to get people to believe in a false religion in order to do um, spiritual wickedness. Amen. So you have to be careful of who you ask to pray for you because who are they praying to? Because if they're praying to Satan, then now you have taken the bait of Satan and the bait of Satan comes from the level of a principality. If I, if I got too deep for you, I'm sorry, but it's time for me to go deep because we're in a season where 2020, some of you are saying, I want it to end. I want this to end. But when God says you're going to get double, you have to realize even in what we're going through, if we re realize that we don't fl uh, fight against flesh and blood, but the principality, and I'm starting with the first and the highest levels of government and the demonic forces. So you can know that Satan dispatches principalities over territories throughout this world in order to catch us as Christians off of our game and we get back in the flesh and out of the spirit in certain situations. And God is letting us know, he's letting us know in this word that, okay, stop fussing with one another, okay? Stop being WWE at home. <laughs> stop being WWE on social media. We know what a wrestling match looks like. 
We know what a boxing match looks like. So that's a flush thing where you're going back and forth. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut, knee lift with a kick. Jab, cross, hook, uppercut, knee lift with a kick. That's what uh, it's in the flesh. You see the jab. You see the uppercut. You see the manifestations. And now you react with the five senses. God is saying, hold on. Be strong in me. I got this in my power. What is the ramifications? What does Satan want you to feel in this moment? Does Satan want you to feel pain? Does Satan want you to feel uh, deceived? Does Satan want you to feel um, hurt? Does Satan want you to feel revenge? Does Satan want you to feel, you see where I'm going with this? So, So at the highest levels, start sending stuff in the territory. And see, we have to realize we don't want to give Satan permission to send anything our way. And that's why God is saying we got to be strong. Right now, we got to be strong for America. We got to be strong. We've got to be strong. We've got to be strong. We've got to know when we hear a lie. We have to know when uh, a, a, a situation is trying to get us into a wrong reaction. But we cannot give on... We cannot give up on God because God is not going to give up on you. Amen. God is not going to give up on you. So you can't give up on him. God is not giving up on you. Somebody needs to type, God has not given up on me. So that's the first one. And I I want to break them down into three uh, more videos, a, a territory. Amen. A territories. Or not territories, or or but categories, amen. So the next video I'm going to talk about uh, powers and rulers of darkness, amen. Thank you for for joining in this morning, giving God the glory and the honor. But you need to understand the power of a principality. You need to understand the power of. Um, good morning, Sister Aaron. You need to understand the power of being strong in the Lord and the power of His might before you put on that whole armor. So I'm gonna break down uh, uh, against powers and so you'll know the difference between the dunamis power and powers of darkness. There's a difference because when you work in dunamis, uh, demonic powers can't touch you. Ah! When you know against rulers of darkness, so those are, are governments that the principalities, the territories, have allowed at the highest level. I'm going to cover that. And wickedness in high places. So once you know, so those are four areas or categories and levels of demonic activity in high places, in the atmosphere. Amen. But they can't reach the third heaven. I hope you learned something today. Um, I'm asking you if you're ready to give, please do. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, please do. Uh, 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 Deacon um, Robinson, can you come here for a second? I'm not sure if I can reach this. Sister Annette, yeah, can you come here for a second? Come on, come on quickly. So I'm asking you if you're ready to, to give an offering, please do. And if you don't have the master's card, Please uh, do. Can you get these uh, posters for me? Amen. If you do not have your cup, I'd love to send that to you. Amen. And if you do not have our bracelets, you want the abundance season bracelets. Amen. So if you want to donate, you can donate now on PayPal. Right here. I hope you can see it. There you go. Amen. And if you want the resources, I recommend right now 12 Weapons of Spiritual Warfare. And you can um, back play this video to see. But here's the book right here. Please, if you need the power of prayer, get this book. Amen. So I'm going to type right now. If you would like to give, hallelujah. 
Remember PayPal me? Or PayPal.me, I'm sorry. My books are falling off the table here. There we go. Or the mantle. There we go. Hallelujah. Somebody say order. Praise God. PayPal.me slash Abundant Season. Feel free to give or cash at. And it's dollar sign donate. A-S-A-M-I. Praise God. Amen. So those are the ways you can give. And remember, every time you give, I pray over. <laughs> I pray over what you give. Amen. Giving God all the honor, all the glory. Do we have any special prayer requests? Because I'm going in. We're talking about the principality that's been a stronghold over something. If you have a prayer request, please type it here. Or you can call 937-275-3770 or email me at AbundanceSeason at Live.com. And I'm sorry, AbundanceSeason, typo there, at Live.com. There we go. And the reason I'm saying, because if your prayer request is personal, and you don't want everybody to know your business, call me, amen, or email me. And we will touch and agree in accordance with Matthew 18, 20. Whatever principality that has had some territory influence over circumstances in your life, it's time to shut it down in the name of Jesus. Oh, the power of God just came over me. It's time to shut it down. Somebody needs to type, it's time to shut down that activity. It's time to shut down that influence. No, the devil cannot have the promises of God. It is time to shut it down. I override the assignments and the principalities in the air right now in high places in the name of Jesus. I override it. I cancel the assignment in the name of Jesus. It's time to shut it down. Every influence every stronghold anything that's wicked in high places my armor has been sharpened I am strong in the Lord and I am in the power of his might I speak dunamis power over it in the name of Jesus God shut it down shut it down shut down those portals that have been opened with satanic influence over my family over my life over my job over my situation over my finances over the people I love, I break it, I shut it down in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Somebody needs to begin to say, I receive that in the name of Jesus. See, because now you put Satan on notice. And then in James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, uh, Submit yourselves to God. Resist Satan and he shall flee from you. So that principality has to flee from you because you're submitting yourself to God. Oh, God. Ah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. See, some things are being broken right now. Some influences are being broken right now. Some territories are being destroyed right now. That's been over your circumstances. That principality has got to go in the name of Jesus because now you have proclaimed the power of God's might and he's shutting it down. He's shutting it down in the name of Jesus. He's shutting it down. He's shutting it down. That it's been too long. It's been hovering in the atmosphere and God is taking it. He's breaking it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 See, see, when you start casting down the imaginations and principalities that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and you proclaimed it in the atmosphere, and you've given it to God, that now you know what you know what you know, that it was not you. 
But Satan has been orchestrating this at the highest levels to make sure that it just hovers, uh, ho hovers in the atmosphere in every territory that you are in. God says no more because now you know that you have beat him to what he's been trying to do. That you beat him to the circumstance. That God is on the assignment with some dunamis power. Because now you're strong in God. Not strong in self, not puffing yourself up. But now you're strong in battle. Because God is fighting for you. You're not in this wrestling match anymore. You're no longer in the WWE. You're no longer trying to box it out. But God is doing it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's doing it. Oh, I can't wait to cover the other levels of Satan's demonic government so that now every shackle, every chain, every situation is about to break, 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 break in Jesus' name. So thank you for joining us this morning. I said I wasn't going to be long, but I know when God has a plan, it's healing time. And he's letting the healing begin. Hallelujah. So thank you for joining me this morning. Remember, Tuesday, Bible study, 6.30 p.m., I'm going to talk about power and spiritual wickedness. We've been putting our armor on, but we forgot the levels of assignments and territories. And I want to break those shackles so that you will be prepared for days and months and years to come. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. And remember, this is your abundant season. God bless.